Welcome to Hot Mic Gaming. This is the central gaming podcast where two best friends get to talk about games mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. My name is Zach. And my name is Phil. And you are listening to us on to the Into the Geekverse podcast feed with Zach Pope. Of course, I'm Zach Pope. I'm a film critic, but I love talking about video games. And my best friend Phil over here is a game fanatic. We have been trying to put together a gaming podcast forever. And after a lot of discussion, a lot of discussions on what we wanted to do with it, we settled on this idea where we're just going to talk. We're just going to talk about what is are the exactly. hot topics for Hot Mic Gaming. But specifically, we had to start it because of Fallout. That's right, everyone. A dearly hearted franchise for yep. myself. One of our favorites. Up. Yeah, yep, exactly. Growing up, I was such a big fan with Fallout. My first exposure to it was when the Fallout 3 trailer yep. came out and a just seeing trailer. the music, this mm -hmm. apocalypse. And then at the end, it cuts to the power armor and this really like yeah. intense ambiance about this world and how it's going to drag you in. yeah which is like one of those things that we were talking about because we were originally recording and then it all got messed up so we had to restart oh is the cover art the fallout 3's cover art was incredible it was like one of the oh, main yeah. reasons i had to pick it up new vegas goes pretty hard as well but mm -hmm. we talk about how and that, that would probably just be a topic on its own is like video game cover art and how much it's changed like oh, back yeah. in the day you see fallout 3 or bioshock and both of those were like instant buys for me because of just the suits itself and of course we have our own power armor helmet in studio if you're listening to us you obviously can't hear it or see mm -hmm. it but if you're watching us on video, then yeah, you got that. So we're going to roll this intro and then we're going to jump right back into it. We get this off, Phil, since this is our first episode and we are going to talk about Fallout pretty extensively. Just as a heads up, this is about the Fallout TV series. We're going to be going into spoilers on it. Um, we're also going to talk about some of the games, but this is mostly a podcast to discuss two big fans of the franchise and what and why we loved the TV series. And again, spoiler review because uh, New Vegas showed up at the fucking end and I screamed and I wanted <laughs> to tell you so bad when I first watched it because I watched it before you mm -hmm. and I was like, he's going to fucking flip for this. This is his favorite Fallout game. They're actually acknowledging New Vegas. Yeah, it's it's crazy to see when uh, video game adaptations in general, they bring up a lot of real locations yep. that you got to see in game and immerse yourself in, and they, and they just bring, bring it, back, it to you. Yeah. They just bring it to you. And, and the skyline, it's so recognizable. And I know there's a lot of fans out there right now who are like pissed and saying that maybe they retconned it. Let's see season two first. A lot yeah. of times passed. Stuff changes. Who knows? It might be for the best. And it's going to be interesting because there's multiple endings in New Vegas. So mm -hmm. which one did they go with? Who's alive? Who's not? Yeah, that's one thing that I obviously... I got to read up a little bit more yeah. on. It's like the timeline. When they do mm -hmm. like 22, 91, 75 or whatever, I get lost. Exactly. Um, with exactly. the NCR, I could definitely see why people were a little bit upset because mm -hmm. it didn't seem super organized. Yeah. Uh, the most like iconic thing you get to see is like the NCR president and his like right and left hand man. Mm -hmm. They have the... They just drip out in the iconic like it's deputy badass. suits. It's badass. It's hard to deny on that. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of want to jump into this. You said that you loved the Fallout 3 trailer and that kind of got you into this franchise. You're, you've are you played 76 up to a certain degree, even with all yep. the controversy. You've played a lot of 4. You've played New Vegas uh, 3. I, I mean, for me, 3 and New Vegas for me were like two of the most played games I've ever played, specifically 3. Oh, yeah. And the last time I... Well, one of the last times. So there's been two games where I literally have sat down and just played like to where it was like maybe almost 24 hours. One was last of us part two. I just had to know how that story ended. Uh -huh. But the last time before that, where it was a core RPG where like, yeah, you can beat the story, but there's so much to do is fallout four. Mm -hmm. I sat down and played that game for at least a solid 15 hours straight. I fucking love that game to a certain extent. I think there's certain things that falls apart in terms of story, but yeah, obviously, um, I have a lot of bias opinions about the yeah. engine that Fallout runs on. Yeah, um, but that's a, not, Phil. Yeah. That's a whole other fucking discussion. <laughs> we, could, we could literally <laughs> vent our thoughts on Bethesda's engine. But as just Fallout in general, when Fallout Four first came out, it, it was 
it was a guarantee. Like I sunk in hundreds of hours. Yeah. Um, I got the little collector's edition I and I it. did the, I did the whole thing where you the get Pit the Pip Boy, Boy yeah. and you could put your phone in it I love and had it. an app and you could actually like interact and like press a button. Well, on that's it. what's cool. Like I'm waiting for them to come out with like a VR version of this where you can like be well, even more or do they have it? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they have Fallout oh. 4 VR. I mean, oh, it's, I didn't know that. It's that's pretty cool. cool. Um, I, I never really got it. But it's on it. that engine. So you, yeah. you have. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we could do a whole Starfield yeah. debate on this. I oh, like Starfield. <laughs> I like Starfield. It was a little bit of a mess. A whole though. Bethesda podcast. It's hey, maybe, maybe Lord. we do a follow up. Maybe that's next month. Yeah. I mean, there's more to discuss on there, but you know, going back to the show, what was something that you wish there was more of? There's one issue I have with the show, because just kind of give our rating, and just so people know how our rating scale works over here, Ooh. we do one through ten, skip the seven, because right. Phil likes to say that if you can just say a seven, it's a little bit too easy, so we're going to skip the seven. I'm not even worried about this. First time I watched it, a B plus. Second time I watched it, I give it an A minus. What about you? Um... Obviously, with my fallout bias and everything, yeah. I, I think the show's definitely at a 90% for me. Okay. Uh, it's so about an A- minus as well? Yeah, it's okay. an A- minus, or even like I would just say a straight A. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of how they did things. The, the big thing about fallout for me has always been like the satire on mm -hmm. like dark humor and, and they did a really good job specifically with corporations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed with that. I didn't expect for them to honest. Well, Coming from the creators of Westworld, uh, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, I, I expected a little bit more of a nuance to that. Uh -huh. I just didn't know how deep they would go, specifically because it's it's on Prime. It's, it's an Amazon Prime yeah. show. So uh, with that in mind, my one issue with the show, I wish there was more creatures. I wish they went a little bit more, like no super mutants, no death claws. Yeah. Like the creatures they picked, I don't know if it was like budget restraint or what their choices were for that, but... They, I feel like they could have done a little bit more. Like we got a lot of ghouls, that was mm -hmm. cool. We got feral ghouls and just normal ghouls. We got a little bit of like more background context, the ghouls and how that works. The rad roaches, uh, the bear, and then the um, the gupper. Is that yep. what it's called? It's yeah, the gulper. It's the a, gulper. Yeah, yeah. It's a Fallout seventy six only so, creature. But that's my thing. Like the whole time I was like waiting. Okay, death claw. I mean, we get the skull at the end, mm -hmm. but no death claw. And then someone found there's a, you see a hand of a super mutant at one point in the lab. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure in episode two, when uh, you see a super mutant, hand, yeah. but like, a, and you see references to it, like in that whole big meeting when they're talking about the bomb, mm -hmm. um, and the vault text talking about all the experiments. One of them does mention the super mutants that they want to experiment on. Yeah, so like, super soldiers. Yeah. So like, that's for me. Okay. Like you're teasing that. I'm assuming that's something we see in the future. Mm -hmm. It just felt like little small omissions that I'm like, you gave me everything, but those were like two things I was kind of expecting. What about you? Um, oh man, what anything I... else I was missing that you wish that was in the show or like, do you, or do you agree with me on those? Do you think it didn't matter? I think personally, uh, a lot of the representation of what I like in Fallout is in there. Okay. Um, I, I'm always a big sucker for a lot of the humor and a lot of like the this. humor was very well done. Yeah, they do a good job of making it serious because that's how the, the game is. It's like at one point, like it's very funny and kooky and wacky and weird, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, oh fuck, man, like this is pretty yeah. dark. No, it, it's the uh, the action in it was pretty well balanced. It yeah. does have like that like shoot 'em up cowboy. They style. even have the Vats system basically in, in episode two, like the yeah. jankiness of the Bethesda Vats system kind of was in there, <laughs> like from the angles and everything. Um, and I wasn't expecting that. That was a nice, mm. pleasant surprise. Now, with that, was there anything, like going to the series, what did you want? Like, what did you want to see? I wanted to see, obviously, a lot of the creatures. I mm -hmm. wanted to see a lot so of... So you're a little disappointed to only have a yeah, couple? Yeah, I okay. mean, it, it was a bummer to not see like something like Super Mutants. Yeah. But uh, I am hoping with season two and the way how they teased... Um, a lot of like the corporations, West yeah. Tech is, I'm pretty sure the ones that do make super mutants and okay. the FEV virus and all that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to see a little bit more around that as like a, maybe a subplot for season two. Yeah. Um, I do think that seeing some of the equipment was cool. I do wish I got to see more of like the fallout uniqueness. Like yeah. I, I wish I saw a fat man. 
Like that would yeah. be cool. You see, you see a bullet of one, I guess, in that store in episode yeah. two. There's a lot of Easter eggs throughout the show, which is like something that's really cool as fans to kind of like piece apart. Like, I was waiting for war. War never changes yeah, the entire the time, and it, and it was there. And they they do certain things like that, but it kind of did dive a little bit deeper into like the spoilers of the characters because the reason the show works so well. And necessarily, I think there's some people who might think the show is a little bit too side questy. But like, that's the thing about Fallout mm-hmm. is you go on side quests to get to the main point of the story and what you're supposed to find. And that's the one thing that I was very taken back with with how Fallout set up itself is it sets you up in this first episode with three main characters: mm-hmm. Maximus, the Ghoul, and uh, Lucy. Which who yep. was your favorite? Honestly, I'm. I know it's popular to just say the ghoul, like yeah, it's Walton Goggins. I'm actually a pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of Maximus. I think Uh, really, he was my least favorite character. But go on. Yeah, I think like the arc of Uh a little boy who gets his world completely destroyed in front of him, and he sees this soldier, this person who saves him and takes him under like Mm -hmm. their wing. It's a cool dynamic to see how like a culture can easily I did like the culture part yeah. and like adopt someone like that and change their entire lifestyle and also them. be a little bitch that dude that part when he yeah. goes into the bear and he's like fuck 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 yeah. fuck, fuck. <laughs> it, it, it was so it was so funny mm-hmm. and the show has a lot of those moments I was gonna say uh, one of my favorite things about this show was like how they changed a little bit um, the Brotherhood of Steel obviously in the games they they always show like undertones of like they're more tech focused and everything, yeah. but you get to see a daily routine the way how they had like squires as like their pack mules, which to I carry assume that's stuff. how I look when I'm running with a bunch of shit. In the game. Yeah, exactly. Do you think that was like a nice reference to that? I feel like it was just carrying everything. Yeah. A little pit boy, thousands of pounds. I loved it. And I like how the pit boy reacted, but I also like like, if you go back to episode one, when like Lucy meets her husband, mm-hmm. you instantly know something's wrong. Yeah. And the way it plays out, like you see the scar when they're having sex, and instantly I thought, "Are these raiders?" Mm-hmm. Like, um, so there's a lot of fun nuances to this, but I think one of the things that I wasn't expecting was how deep they were going to get into the characters of it all. And when you have Lucy's character, but specifically the ghoul, the whole way that plays out through the flashbacks from earlier on, and how when you find out something in the flashbacks, it clicks right in. To what's going on in the show mm-hmm. the ghoul the second he meets hank mclean and it ties into when he was like a mclean to when lucy was like oh i'm lucy mclean and all that uh-huh. stuff and i found that to be very interesting what do you think of the twist the turns and all that stuff of vault 31 and the vault 31 basically taking over those two vaults and that the whole uh secret testing stuff there um i think if it's it's like uh, it's very corporate evil, but mm-hmm. it's uh, I think it fits a very good narrative to like respecting the source material to how like Vault Tech really was. Yeah. Um, obviously, the what's her name the, of the Raider group? Uh, I can't remember her uh, name. Off the top. the fire leader or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. fire. The fire leader. She obviously was like a scientist before the yeah. war, and she came up with clean energy. And to when she shows up. And she's like a part of that communist meeting. Yeah. It was great. It's like, oh, she, okay, so how did she get here and there? Mm -hmm. To kind of tie back to that, though, one of the things that really stuck out to me personally as a fan was when they were telling through those meetings, and you see all these different flashbacks, but how they wanted to directly tell the characters itself, like, hey, like, look at what's going on over here, how this all ties back. Did did you like how they did like Norm's storyline? How he's trying to how he figures out a lot of this and mm-hmm. okay, um, the way how the whole vault subplot is yeah. actually like pretty. Good. I, I thought it was going to be low key kind of dumb, and then yeah. it got really good really fast. Yeah, it it was a good change of pace in the Moises show areas to for um, the to like have a little bit more of like a mystery take to things. Yeah. right. It you took a break from like the action, and then it went back to the vault again and again and then that was like one maybe yeah. one of the lesser points i was like okay what's what's the whole but point it always here? kept intriguing you and th- that's one thing that i'm really impressed with within fallout itself is the fact that you can look at this series and a character will be like oh that's how i play fallout that mm-hmm. that's the exact way i play fallout i'm a hacker oh no no no, no. i'm I, I like being pretending i'm a vault dweller it's a role-playing aspect 
But one thing that I loved about this, and I don't know if you felt this way, Fallout, there's a lot of choices you have to make. Mm -hmm. Some things that can change the entire wasteland forever, like uh, Fallout 3 when you blow up Megaton, or yeah. don't blow up Megaton. Mm -hmm. I felt watching this series, and I loved it because it gives you that karma development, and Lucy is that character for us. When she finds out that her dad fucked over everyone. Yeah. And it, it's that choice. Save your dad, the person that you were supposed to trust this entire time, or the person that you've been going after for vengeance is actually doing the right thing, basically. Mm -hmm. Who do you who do you side with? Who do you choose? I love that because it made me, in that moment when I first watched it, I'm like, I feel like I'm making a choice. Yeah. Uh, they did a really good job with just Lucy in general in this show. She's so good. They, She's so, so good. Lucy, the fact that they yeah. gave her essentially what is like a clean slate. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, like Maximus is just a downright good guy. Yeah. Like, eh. in, in aspects, right? Like, they talk about like... He has a moral dilemma sometimes. Yeah, he has a moral dilemma. But you obviously have that, like, this very innocent person who never really grew out of yeah. being a I mean, boy. dude, she says, okie dokie. Yeah. And then you got the ghoul who is obviously like turned sour, turned bitter. Yeah. And then you have Lucy, who is a very neutral character. Yeah. And you do get to see a lot of... You see like, her sway. Yeah. You see her get exposed to these dramatic choices. Yeah. So what like, level uh, do you think she was by the end of this game or by the end <laughs> of the season one? I think she might have been level 19, right 19. before the level cap. Okay. Just like every game there is. Fair enough, fair enough. What about the ghoul? The ghoul, I think he's definitely the, the level 30 max. Yeah, maxed out. Yeah, maxed out. <laughs> I love that. And that's what I love. Like I, I joke around with the okie-dokie and how she was. Because like, when you go from the opening scene of Fallout, when the bombs start to drop, which was great, mm -hmm. and then it cuts right to the vault, and it's like, what, 215 years later? Yeah. And you see the vault, and you see how lucy is and she's like okie dokie yada yada and she's talking about like yeah we don't do cousin stuff anymore like you get that silly stuff all the way to the ending where you know the ghoul's like you can come with me and figure this all out and she goes yeah okie dokie like it's a completely different tone and change mm -hmm. and you see where maximus ends at he's he's having everything that he could possibly or at least what he wanted from the start yeah and does he still want that yeah he's obviously sitting there with this moral dilemma mm -hmm. about like well, his friend, first off, like, saved his ass by, like, saying, exactly. oh, you killed the fire leader, right? Yeah. Even though the whole point of him being there was to just save her and yeah. just be with her. And so now he's kind of put in a position where he kind of does get everything he wants, but it's no longer what he wanted. Exactly. And I, I love that. I love this series. So, Phil, to kind of give us our last rounding thoughts on the Fallout series, what do you think overall... Like, what do you want from the next season? What are your predictions for the future? Let, let's hear them. Um, what I want out of the next season is that I really want to see, because it ends with New Vegas, and you get to see the strip. Mm -hmm. I want to see how Which Mr. Which it looks destroyed. Yeah. I want to see how Mr. House plays into this. And I do you think see, he's in it? I, I do think he's in it. He's okay. got to be in it. And if he is in it, then it's going to show where in the timeline where the career is yeah and how that relates to new vegas which it would be cool it might be past that or it might be before that i have to look at the timelines yeah. itself i'm very interested to see how they do mr house's stuff yeah um and what else might tie in there are there other characters that show up in the uh, wasteland caesar's legion that was the, yeah uh that's the one that i really want to say is there a chance that he's working with them I mean, who knows? Because he Ugh. goes there for a reason. And what we can assume is that the ghoul's wife is probably still alive. Yeah. And is there a chance his daughter's still alive? Because someone mentions to him, are you still looking for them? Yeah. He's like, well, he's like, where the fuck is my family? Yeah. And I wouldn't imagine him just saying that, like, if it was just his wife. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff. So I, I imagine in the next season, we'll get a little bit more flashback stuff. Uh -huh. We'll kind of piece together. I, we might even piece together how he became the ghoul like mm -hmm. i want to see those split seconds after the bomb dropped where were they yeah then and there he rides off on this horse and it just kind of goes off yeah. which kind of uh weirds me out in a way because it's like he figures it all out mm -hmm. beforehand doesn't he yeah like before the bombs fall for the so. most part yeah because when you go through the timeline you assume that maybe him and his wife split or something like that Oh, you know what? That is true. I'm just trying to think back to the birthday party at the beginning yeah. of the series. It's very interesting. Again, lots of questions I still have, but I need to see on a second season. Yeah. So 
to round that out, um, those are our final thoughts. Those are our predictions. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm still sticking to an A minus, a nine out of yeah, ten. It's it's a ninety five for me, yeah. and I think for like a casual viewer, mm-hmm. it's definitely like a B rated yeah. or an A minus for them. Now, before we kind of dive into like Fallout in general and Bethesda, I want to ask you. There's a lot of video game adaptations that have come out recently. Uh, mm-hmm. Lucy being also Jinx in Arcane. You have the Last mm-hmm. of Us series. You have uh, the Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Yep. And there's a couple other series coming out soon. We have um, God of War coming also from Prime, which oh, is, really? I don't know if you knew about that. No, I did They are not. developing it. I don't love the showrunners involved, but I'm okay. I'm a little bit open-minded on that. Uh, if To kind of give you a little bit of background context, uh, the God of War series will not, it'll be taking place from the newer games. Okay. I, I don't know how to feel on that personally. I still believe they should have gone back, but maybe they do a flashback thing and it, yeah. it all pays off in the end. Because, give or take, those original games would not be fit for story. Yeah. It was more about killing, action, stuff like that. If you want to take more of a dramatic approach, you need to do the newer games. So, that's a whole other, again, yeah. another conversation for another time. But, they're doing God of War. They're doing a Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, they're doing a Death Stranding movie. Um, of course, they have the Sonic films out, which are a lot of fun. But, in pure television, I would say we have Fallout, Last of Us, Arcane... Did you watch Cyberpunk, Ed Runners? Yes. I okay. Did. I want to ask for your ranking of those four on the spot. Didn't tell Phil. I didn't tell Phil I was going to be okay. Doing this, so, uh, all right. Um, this is really hard. Someone asked me to do yeah. this the other day. Uh, it, it is a hard choice, and the the big thing for me is that obviously these video game adaptations. I grew up mm-hmm. playing League of Legends for ten years. Yeah. It's terrible, but. Um, their video game th- adaptions based around in the universe that they're built in, right? Yeah. Like Last of Us, I would argue, had like a full blueprint, a step by step. It was basically like when you play the game, you're basically watching a movie. Yeah, exactly. And when you're watching the movie, or I mean, watching the show, I mean, they they add things. They added things, but I also just felt like this is almost a one for one of the game and it's mm-hmm. very faithful. Yeah. And that's why I think everyone loved it. It's very and I'll tell you this, so, it's very hard to rank these because Yeah. Give me your ranking and then I'll give yeah. you my So the way that I kind of see it is that it's hard because I don't even want to group Last of Us with it because yeah. it's not but you have to. I'm it's an original. I'm, I'm forcing you to I know. I'm forcing you to fucking do it's this. An, it's not an original story mm-hmm. though. But um I think I would have to go with, oh goodness, I would have to go with Arcane. Okay. With being the number top. one. Yeah, okay. Number All one. All right. It, Arcane is great. You were the one that told me to watch yeah. it. Yeah. And I watched it in one day and thought it was incredible. Yeah. I'm, I just, I loved Arcane. I can't, I, I know that I can't, I hope, I can't wait for it this year. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's going to be good. Um, I hope then they, take, I I hope have they to go. by the way, I hope they take it to San Diego Comic Con. I do. I do hope so too. It would be great. Yeah. I would love to see the behind mm-hmm. the scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. So I would have to go with Fallout second. Okay. And then I would have to go with Cyberpunk Edge Runners third. And then Last, Last of Us. Last. Wow. Because I, I, I get it. I, get I understand it. like Last of Us is very good and I, that was something mm-hmm. that I like I watched with my mom and yeah. she loved it. But the and thing she is, doesn't know like, anything about yeah, video games. But I grew up not really playing last mm-hmm. of us that's fair that's fair so for me um to give my ranking of it number one is the last of us for me it's my favorite video game of all time i was nervous that they were gonna fuck it up mm-hmm. and they didn't all they did was add emotion they oh, yeah. added character development which makes me excited to see what they do with the season two because i don't need the gameplay stuff like yeah it would be cool to see them like fuck around and fight bloaters and stuff like but, yeah. but like realistically like you can't fight a bloater the thing's just gonna murder you. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what they do a season two of. It's gonna be very tricky. They gotta be careful. Uh-huh. But I think they can do it because I think that just gives them more depth to touch onto like the Sephirites and the cult and Abby and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm, they need to. They they they, they have, have to. to. You and me have split opinions on. Last yeah, but of you us haven't too. played Last of Us two, so I you know. can't you can't say anything. You can't tell me that. But in general. Uh, I would go number one, The Last of Us. Number two, I'd go League of Legends or Arcane. Mm-hmm. And I, I wasn't huge on League of Legends. I had a good month spree where I played the hell out of it. And then I just said, okay, if I keep doing this, I'm never going to be able to get anything done. And I stopped playing League of Legends. Yeah. I loved Arcane. I thought it was brilliant. 
Number three, I would go Fallout. Fallout's really, really close to Arcane, though. Like, this splits, like, the smallest sliver of stuff. The only reason I go a little bit higher with Arcane is I think Arcane just had a better story overall. Mm-hmm. Like, it's pacing and it's emotion. Uh, Fallout was just really cool to be into this world. And last place is Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I honestly thought was very overrated. I think the animation's great, but uh, I didn't think the story was anything to write home about. And I love the Cyberpunk game, though. Yeah. I love that game. I've beaten it, like, five, six times. The next-gen update, I still haven't even beaten. I just love fucking around in the world. So I'm going to leave it at that. Coming out to our next ranking, though, Phil, we're going to rank all the Fallout media. So any Fallout you've played can be included in this, and the TV show is up for grabs. So I'm going to give you my ranking first, then you give me yours. Now, I have played every Fallout to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. One, two, and Tactics. I never played that other one you were telling me about, the Brotherhood Brotherhood of Steel. Steel, So I'm not talking about that one, yeah. (laughs) But one, two, and Tactics, I played very small, like a couple hours I wasn't that impressed, but I like the quirkiness of it. So my number one is Fallout 3, mostly probably for nostalgic reasons. It was the first Fallout I played. I love the wasteland, love the world. Two is New Vegas. Um, I get the hype about New Vegas. I think the survival mode is like one of the best things about it personally. Mm -hmm. New Vegas for me though, here's my thing. I didn't get the hype about it until I played survival because I thought it was very barren and a little boring. Yeah. And when you play survival, everything makes sense. Everything, Every little location you go to means sense. But I love the story of New Vegas. I still think New Vegas has the best story. Then I go into my number three, which is Fallout the show. I think the show just, on a story level, it just nails exactly what it is. It l- nails the West Coast aspect of Fallout that I've wanted to see. And I'll tell you right now, I would bet money Fallout 5 is in the West Coast. I think it will be. I don't think it'll be on the East Coast. I think the next actual Fallout game will be on the West Coast. Do you do you have a thought on that before I go on my ranking? No, I, I think that's uh, an agreeable statement because the f- number four took place in Boston. Mm-hmm. So they, I definitely th- see keep themselves. Moving. Yeah, they got to pick something West Coast, especially now with so much exposure to yeah. the NCR. Where, would, where what state would you like to see? I don't need to see I, uh, California. Would be cool, obviously, but mm-hmm. uh, and we've already gone to Vegas, but yeah. I want to see. What, oh. Do they do Arizona, where we're from? Well, they they did do a little bit of Arizona. They had the Grand Canyon oh, and the New yeah, Vegas yeah. DLC, which, I mean, I think it's cool because seeing, like... Well, let me ask you, that: would you want to see something that's not in the United States, like a Mexico? Uh, South America? No, if I if I had to choose one, like if it was out of states, I would yeah. pick somewhere like Eastern Europe. Oh, okay. Do you know there was one vault in Canada? Oh really? Yeah, someone I saw someone post that. I'm like, that'd be interesting to be the the vault dweller coming out of that one thing. (laughs) See Niagara Falls. Like, what if it's like right next to it? That'd be pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, So okay. To finish my ranking, uh, my number four is Fallout Four. I I really really like Fallout Four. Out of all the Bethesda games, I'd say this is probably the game that plays the best. Yes. Uh, Story is a little forgettable. The reason Fallout 4 is a little bit lower for me is I thought the add-ons were kind of boring. Yeah. Um, 3, I still think, has the best ones. I know you think New Vegas has the best add-ons. I actually think that... I think 3 has the most fun add-ons. Okay. Uh, Operation Anchorage, or... Th- yeah. That one's They're amazing. They're, like, unique. Yeah. Uh, Mothership Zeta, all those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there... Oh, I forgot about 76. Uh, I would put 76 <laughs> at Fallout uh, at number 5. Fallout, uh, Fallout 2 is at number 6. Number seven would be Fallout 1, and then last place is Fallout Tactics for me. Yeah. Uh, Phil. All righty. So ahead. as far as my experience with Fallout, I played mm-hmm. all of them. Um, I barely got maybe like a few hours in 1 and 2. Yeah, and that's fine. I, even growing up when I was playing 3, I'm like, I need more Fallout. <laughs> so I bought the PS2 Brotherhood of Steel that I saw at GameStop, and I played that for like... It? Oh, no, I do not. Fuck. I want to play know. it. I want to play it. Like, it, it looks awful, but it looks it's, fun. It's terrible. <laughs> but it looks fun. It looks fun. It, it was fun for being, a, like, a middle schooler and just wanting to consume as Fallout. much yeah, media. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my rankings would have to go with number one being New Vegas. Okay. I think it has the best story. I like the diversity of, like, a lot of the gunplay mechanics, yep. having different ammunitions, the Gunrunners DLC, and one of my favorite Fallout characters ever, Joshua Graham, otherwise known Good as character. The, yeah, Burning Man. I could listen to that guy speak to me all day. I could just, just listen like to this. him. I know, right? Just the way he introduces himself yeah. and, like, the bibliography, like, 
the talking and all that. It's just, it's amazing. He's a great character. Very charismatic. I love it. And then number two, I would have to go with Fallout 3. Fuck it's yeah. the... It's the one that I just started off with. So, mm-hmm. like, it just holds the most of my heart. Yeah. I think it has the best DLC, the most unique. Yep. Uh, Anchorage, Mothership Zeta, Point Lookout was just oh, super Point cool. Awesome. Very, um, under, very creepy. Yeah, it is. It's, Far Harbor, I'll give credit to Fallout 4, by the way. Far Harbor was pretty damn good, too. Yeah, Far Harbor. And I, I'm actually playing through Nuka World right now on Fallout okay. 4, which, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's finicky. <laughs> Be but I it's felt a little disappointed with you. Yeah, world, but that's just me. So number two, definitely be Fallout right. Three. Number three. Uh, number three, I would have to go with the show. As okay, well. so you're agreeing with yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. So like, I think it's the second best in like storytelling. Okay. okay. Seeing a lot of those different perspectives and seeing how these factions actually yeah. handle each other, the NCR Agreed. and the Brotherhood of Steel, which like in New Vegas you never really got to see. Mm-hmm. Um, number four. Oh boy. It might be Oh, uh, yeah, it'll be Fallout 4. Okay. Yeah. I can, Were you about I'm, to say 76? Yeah, I was about to say 76. You can say 76. I know, it's okay. I know. There's fans of I 76. Have, I have 1,200 hours in That's 76. a fucking joke. That is a, <laughs> that is a, I looked up my Steam library. I'm like, oh, wow, I, I have so much hours. That is a fucking joke, Phil. But, um, that is a Fallout 4. Joke. Uh, it, I, I think it does have like the most fresh gameplay because it's the most recent one. Yeah. Um, it, the way how they handled power armor yeah, though, I really like, I it. think is the best representation of power armor. And they than, do like, the same thing in the show too. Yeah. Other than like fallout two, because like in fallout two and one, when you have the power armor, you could like one hand a mini gun and yeah. stuff like that. It shows you how strong it really is, but it's a turn, it's a turn based game. So yeah. it's like, you can't really display it too much. Yeah. So, okay. Then it would be Fallout 76, very controversial yeah. of the game. Um, I liked the whole community aspect of it. A lot of my time on there was just trading. Well, that's the thing. I actually watched a video because I'm thinking about jumping back on it for a little bit because of the show. And to hear that most of the community has actually gone away from PvP and more towards PvE and working uh-huh. together, that's kind of like unique to see specifically in like a, a franchise, not even a franchise like that, but an online community like that. You don't everything's so toxic nowadays yeah um, it's, so I love it's that. pretty cool even when i hopped on 76 what i do see is like extremely high level players like level 900 mm-hmm. and they'll hang out at the uh the vault door where you start off and they just drop people like basic things like stem packs that's and so stuff. cool and i'm like oh you know that's an introducing thing so i would stick my camp out there too and i would help out all the new See, players that's and make cool. like Very and that's person. like when you get to make someone's day who's new to the game i think that's cool get them a good start so. yeah exactly okay. there's just, like only like out of like a hundred people i think i can only count like maybe 10 okay or like 11 that i've like ran across and mm-hmm. like okay you're just an asshole okay But otherwise, it's a pretty cool game. I like that aspect, and the bosses are kind of cool, and limit testing is, like, fun. Yeah. Um, So I would have to probably go with Fallout 2 after. I think chasing after the Gek is pretty unique. And then Fallout 1 is super simple, the water chip. Okay. Um, Tactics would probably fall right under it. And Brotherhood of Steel. And Brotherhood of Steel is right down there. Damn. Look at that. Ranking it in last. So to kind of overall give our thoughts and finish out this spoiler review and the spoiler thoughts on fallout what is first off i'm going to ask you a couple of different questions okay okay so first thing what was your favorite part about the fallout series just like in the whole as a whole it could be a moment it could be uh, a character beat it could be just something that they did primarily well what's something that you liked or loved I i'm guess. just i'm a big fan of like the satire yeah, I'm, I'm just. They nailed that. They nailed. Yeah, that. they just really know the good balance of like, oh, you know, they are in an apocalypse, but they're still really socially awkward guys. Yeah. Like Maximus is like, oh, I want to make my cock explode. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that whole thing where she's like, you want to have sex? Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's he's like, the, I, I don't know if I can do that because you know my not not me, but some guys like they 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 just blow and pop and. Yeah, like a balloon. <laughs> And it's it's moments like that where it's just super silly placed in this really dark world where you mm-hmm. do see a lot of gore, a lot of dismemberment. Like when uh, what's his name, uh, the squire for yeah. Maximus, 
where he pretends to be Titus. Yeah. It's the one who picks on him and is like an asshole to him and he steps on his foot. Yeah. And you could see just like how his foot is yeah. and he's like Well remember like when the, the guy got shot in the foot and his foot got blown up and then they install the foot on him in episode oh, yeah. two? It's gross. It's disgusting, but it it's awesome. It, it's cool. It's you can't help but laugh at the absurdity of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's like the biggest high point for me in the Fallout series is just like its commentary on um, okay, and you were like happy corporations. With the show with that. Okay, uh, it's commentary on just like how silly like if a mm-hmm. person growing up in a vault who's been in such a safe world is just mm-hmm. tossed out there. Okay, so. All right, and to leave this, I, I want to we're we're gonna both say three video games that need an adaptation. Could be a movie, could be a show. Goodness, and you gotta at least try and cast one actor with them. Okay. Oh my so goodness. So I I'm, I'll, I'll go first. Give you a thought because okay. I'm throwing this shit at you. My number one is Bioshock. I want a Bioshock, and I want a Bioshock Infinite. Mm-hmm. And you know who I want to play Elizabeth? Yep. Ella Purnell, the girl who played Lucy. Uh. She would be perfect as that and i want keanu to play booker or i want him to play jack yeah um or but, you do something fun and make him both oh yeah because you can true. you can mess around with the timeline a little bit and do something with that and mm-hmm. make it unique to that but uh that's my first that's my first game okay do you have one that you have or you want me to go with the second one um bioshock is definitely one that i'm excited for okay uh they ha- if I, I mean they have a they have a director on board. So. You know, it's funny. The The one actor that comes to my mind is the one who plays Jack from King Kong, Peter Jackson's King oh, Kong. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't um, remember the name. Uh, Adrian Bro- is it Adrian Brody? I, I think I, I so. Think, though. I could but be wrong. But I, I imagine him, and maybe it's because they share the same sailor tattoo yeah. on the wrist. I, so, But that's how I always imagine being like a Fallout or not uh, sorry, Bioshock. Bioshock character. Okay. So is that, like the, is that one of your picks as well? Yeah. Okay. My next pick. Gears of War, directed by Zack Snyder. I don't know. I would probably do Dave Bautista as Marcus. He's like already, they've already done the the skin of him in uh, Gears 5. Uh-huh. He loves Gears of War. He's a big fucking guy. It kind of fits. Obviously, you can't have them all be that big, but I, I think a Gears of War, I would just do one, two, and three as a trilogy of movies. Yeah. Yeah, um, I wouldn't do it as a show. I don't. I don't think a show would work. You could do maybe a, an animated show as like mm-hmm. Emergency Day and stuff like that. But you could really bring the horror. And I would like to see Zack Snyder do it visually because visually he can make something look cool. But he did that Dawn of the Dead remake like back mm-hmm. in like 2004. And if he can capture that horror with kind of like the over the top nature, I think it could work. Mm-hmm. What about you? Got another game? Yeah, I would like to see some type of cyberpunk live action adaptation oh that would be cool i think it would be, same story as the game or a brand new story i think the they would have to do an original story okay um i still would like to see some iconic characters i would maybe choose the timeline where like johnny silverhand's still alive that would be cool um Adam could be Sp- someone they have to yeah. work with or like someone who is around in the same atmosphere as like adam smasher oh and yeah. i would have uh carl urban be the main lead Ooh, carl yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because i, I, love I loved him in his role in judge dread yeah and so like seeing him in that mm-hmm. world and that kind of like dystopian cyberpunk world already it gives me hope that he could do a really yeah. good cyberpunk so. role and uh so for one more game uh for me i would probably pick <sighs> that's tough there's so many franchises i, know. I, I think to. i'm gonna i think i'm gonna do kingdom hearts i think a disney plus kingdom Hearts series would be a really cool thing i would do it straight anime though i would not do live action i think anime is the way to go with kingdom hearts if you had to uh-huh. um i think that's the safest option the safest way you can do it on disney plus do an anime show um you can make it dark you can make it a little kitty it could be all fun and dandy with all that stuff your turn oh boy i'm trying to really think of a lot of the franchises that i played um i know they already have in halo adaptation no that's not a halo adaptation. <laughs> yeah you can I, say halo I, I would love to actually see a real like halo and not like the uh kind of stuff that we got now but i i would love to see like a band of brothers style like of halo. odst like a odst very down and gritty 
and I would love to see like, oh my goodness, who would I even want in that? Oh yeah, I didn't pick. What was the last thing? Uh, Gears of War. I, I said uh, Dave Blast, Dave Batista. Uh, Batista. Uh, what was the last game I just said? Oh, Kingdom Hearts. If I had to pick someone to like voice act, uh, said as like an animation. Uh, yeah, Yuri Lowenthal. I'll just throw him out there because he does Spider Man's voice. I think he could do yeah Sora's or some shit. He played Ben Ten, so and Sasuke <laughs> from Naruto, so. Yeah, I would love to see like an actual fall of Reach. Um, That'd be cool. Or either that, or an original story set in Mombasa. Uh, Mombasa oh, okay. During Halo Two, before the glass. I love that. Uh, Halo Two is the best. So Halo. similar to like ODST, very. I want to keep that same jazz esque feeling. And okay. This very your lone kind of world. I'm down for it. Um, who I would want? I would want a really silent actor who does a really good job of that. There's a lot. Yeah. I, I'm not very familiar with actors. So, I would have to like sit there and look. It's okay. Them. It's so. okay. Maybe we bring it back next time. So yeah. with that said, guys, that is the end of episode one of Hot Mike Gaming, where we talk about Fallout in spoiler review for the most part, but really much just giving our overall thoughts on the franchise, the show, how as fans we were impressed. And if you like this, definitely make sure to follow, rate, subscribe, no matter where you're watching, whether it's on YouTube, listening to us on Spotify, iTunes. Apple Any of the, music? Apple, yeah, uh, or, Apple Podcasts, whatever it's yeah. called. I don't, I don't really know. I use Spotify, but please go and follow there. Uh, we are doing a giveaway for a gift card uh, mm -hmm. to a movie theater of your choice. It'll be about seventy five dollars. So, oh boy. if you want a chance to win that, make sure to go do all those and then email me at zachpopereviews at gmail dot com with the screenshots of those. Or if you don't have that, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Tag me, and I will reshare it, so you get a little bit of an added bonus there. Other than that, Phil. Let's sign off, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, this is obviously my first podcast. I, I love this. This is amazing. And I can't wait to do more and talk about just like the video game industry and about some of our favorite franchises and multiplayer yep. games. And just there's so much to talk about video games as an art and as the way we play them and in the and are entertained by yeah them. and I'm you've already excited. sent me like a bunch of different topics that you want to yeah. do and he was sending me that i was like man that's gonna be a good one that's gonna be a good one yeah i'm stoked so, so. thank you so much yes. for tuning in everyone i appreciate you all and i hope you have a wonderful day you as well guys have fun stay classy and have a great time playing video games yeah